the Ark. You are a survivor, washed up on the beach, and of course, surrounded by dinosaurs. You've lived through raptors, caves, gigas, rude mothers, and 100 days. But new challenges arise. Can you survive 200 days and become the alpha of the land, sea, and sky? But before we begin, we have an announcement. This video is inspired by Luke the Notable's Minecraft series, so go check him out. Well anyways, let's get on with it. <sighs> the morning of day 100. I was interested in what the snow had to offer, so I packed up my dinos and proceeded to leave. I broke my old RG trap for later use and entered the new biome. And yeah, it's really cold here, therefore I needed to make fur armor. I yoinked a wolf, killed it, and harvested it, but I was thoroughly disappointed. I looked for another creature to kill and I found a low level mammoth, and I still got nothing. My new plan was to harvest them with a hatchet instead. I grabbed another wolf and proceeded to bring it over to a warmer climate. Don't worry, wolf, it's gonna be fine. When I harvested it, I was yet again underwhelmed. This is gonna take a while. I took down another wolf, and this time I got just enough for some gloves. Day 101, I was mostly regenerated, so I went out again. I found the moose thing, which dropped even less than the wolves, so I needed a mammoth because this was way too slow. Annoyingly enough, a carno attacked the mammoth too. I didn't want to steal my yield, so I took it out along with the mammoth. But of course, I still got nothing! I took a wolf and executed it, but the pack followed me over, so I had no choice but to kill all of them. I saw Yuta getting pummeled by some pigs, so I had to take my chance of getting a bit of it. But of course, I did not! I was getting sick of this, so I searched exclusively for mammoths. I killed one, but then I heard a Yuta roar, and I saw trees falling. That was a little bit unsettling, but not as unsettling as seeing my mammoth disappear from existence. There you are. Once I found it, I got 60 pel from it. Pleasure doing business with you. I found some penguins, which dropped polymer. I also killed a rhino, which dropped a lot of pelt, so I killed another one. And now I have a full set of fur armor. It only took me about an hour. Now the great thing about the snow place is that the drops are much more valuable. This drop in particular was not valuable. In fact, it's really just useless. Yeah, freaking Dodic saddle and a, a Reneo saddle. The sun was setting, so I went up to the mountains to find a flat and secure area for a base. I removed any threats and plopped down Eclipse, and I added wooden spikes around the edges and cleared the boulders for the rest of the night. In the morning, I went to get some thatch when I got attacked by a saber tooth. I held my shield up until I could be on my Rex. I built a platform and furnished it with the basics, and when it was dark I smelted some metal because the snow has a lot of metal. And if I were to tame a Yuta later on, I would need some. I put my tropical gear away where I would soon forget about them. Day 103, I cooked some steak and headed out to tame a Yuta. I knew there was a red level 80 around here, but I did not see it anymore. I actually found it completely separated from any danger whatsoever. The Yuta wasn't going anywhere, so I got this gold drop. All for a useless... Diplo saddle. I need a grinder. I removed a carno from the cliff because I did not want it to get attracted by the Yuta. And I also made the trap where it decided to stay right next to me. I rotated away and shot it to lure it back into the corner because the trap was not finished yet. Once it was done, I shot it, but then I ran into the sides of the trap and became a little confused. And then I became confused. I just shot it from a distance while it did its thing. And after a bit, it went into the trap all by itself. So I locked it in there, and then I shot it through the tiny crack that I made. But if you do this, make the sides a little bit more spaced out. When it knocked out, I brought some Carno Prime over, and it would need more than two Prime, so I killed another Carno. That wasn't bad, but I still needed more. At the break of dawn, I took out a Mammoth for another two Prime. Waiting for this guy to tame, I got some needed Silica Pearls for the saddle. When she tamed, I named her Yasmin, collected the trap and cryoed her, and then I went back to my base. Alright, everybody. Now, I know our gang is a little bit smaller right now, so I made it bigger. Once I made her saddle, I went to level her up by going around the mountain. The damage output is kind of appalling, but her job is only to boost my other dinos in the boss fight. Yasmin was getting more and more powerful, so I felt safe going up the path to the blue obelisk. There was a decent amount of things to kill, but, uh... The hell? 
Ooh. Yeah, that's that's enough of that. Day 105, I went out on my RG to see where the Giga landed, and I found it. I lured it off the cliff away from my base and into a ditch. I resumed following the path, and goodness gracious, I can see the whole map. There. I checked the obelisk requirements because I was interested in fighting at least the Gamma Monkey. Monkey! My next goal was to get some high-level Megatheriums if I ever wanted to try the Alpha Broodmother. And on my search, I saw a gold drop in the same spot as the last two times, but then I got trash yet again. I finally spotted a level 100 Megatherium, and as you know, that's not bad. Day 106, I prepared another trap and proceeded to kill the Megatherium's level 40 mate. Well, when I assembled the trap, it was kind of at a weird angle, so I had to remove this boulder. Then when it was ready, I, the, the AI of this creature began to stop working. Go away. What's up? The frick is it doing? Snow creatures are weird. It's out, okay, cool. What an immersive experience, eh? Once it was knocked out, I gave it meat and put wooden spikes around the area. I learned my mistakes from last time. It needed more prime, but I got all that I needed from a Chalicotherium. Chalicotherium, whatever you... There is yet another gold drop, and I got yet another useless piece of trash. In the morning, it tamed, and I named her Molly. I dropped her off at my base and looted this drop. Guess what was inside it? I was now trying to find a nice high-level male, but that proved to be difficult. I returned and hopped on Eclipse to remove everything that could pose a threat to me. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god! On day 108, I went out to search for a male Megatherium where I saw a drop. But this time, the loot was honestly not bad. I looked around for a while, picking up sheep, circling mountains, looting more drops, until I gave up, and then just went with this level 40. They can just, they can just breed their way to level 149. The Megatherium was already in the spot where I could trap them, but then I got ambushed. I got the trap assembled and threw my torch down to see it, and I started tranking it. By day 109, it was running and soon knocked out. If you didn't know, Megatheriums are the ultimate bug killers in this game. They get increased damage and armor when they kill them. Once it tamed, I named it Manny and... <laughs> cryoed it. Uh, I cryoed as much of the gang as I could and headed home. I brought a sheep with me too, just because, you know, it's a, it's a sheep. Maybe... Maybe I could use it on a tame. When I got back, that's when I realized I left my other armor in the snow place. Yep. I made Manny and Molly breed, and while I was waiting for the little sloth bear, I tried out my little red dot thingy for my rifle. It didn't do anything. I also realized that so many creatures on this island are nowhere to be seen. I haven't seen the Spino in weeks. Do you even see one creature here? When the mig is finished, I got a mix of the two's levels, but this one actually had a melee mutation. On day 111, I visited the broodmother obelisk to take some rexes home. And then when I got back, I arranged them to breed. You know what? If I'm gonna survive 200 days, I need some good armor. And if drops aren't gonna give it to me, I'll do it myself. I'm broken, I have no metal, so this'll be good enough for a while. When the Rex eggs were done hatching, I sacrificed them to get a pretty decent amount of levels. I was also bored and went to see if any Megatheriums could fit in the cave by my base. Surprisingly enough, this gal fits in the cave. And yes, that was the first time I gammed up. How can you fit in here? It makes no sense! Well, I was able to try out the effect and yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. And the amount of chitin that I got. Seriously, what can I even do with that much? When I left, it was day 112, and with that new obsidian, I was now able to make some polymer for some new shoes. I also wanted more metal, so I went to one of the hills near me when I spotted an explorer note in the thick of it, and I had a plan. I wanted to level up my Yuta quicker, so I might as well get an explorer note for her while getting metal. I returned to execute some... The hell? Whoa, whoa, where's my script? Dude, there's, there's like three pages missing in the script. Wait, what? How the f***? 
I returned to execute some more younglings while the buff was still in effect, and let's just say that I got a good amount of levels. How am I today? Okay. This gal is gonna be just fine for the boss fight, and I went into the dead of night to pick some more rexes from the obelisk. I was bored of flying, so I went in zoom camera mode by pressing K, and it was genuinely entertaining. Swapped Tyrion for mint and went to that cave I saw last video. I've never actually done this cave, so it'll be pretty fun. It was honestly not so bad here. There were quite a few twists and turns, so I just hoped that I went in the right direction. I found a clearing with some ruins, and this place was pretty interesting, but it seemed to be a dead end, which did not seem right. I checked the water for any cave areas, but I was greeted by piranhas. Oh. Piranha. I couldn't see very well, so I gammed up and I saw that all of the piranhas died. That doesn't really make sense, but okay. Maybe they drown- wait, fish can't drown. Well, I was now able to notice that there was a little canal through the water, and I made it through an air pocket where there was another underwater cavern. And then another air pocket, and this one I had to do an unorthodox way of getting up. But it worked at the end, so who cares? Hey, more water. I found the artifact of the pack, which seemed to be pretty easy. Okay then. But yeah, uh, there are Sarkos here, and I did not know that. Now uh, there's this cliff ledge that was a lot more uh, difficult than the uh, last one, but I somehow got up. I found a clearing when I got attacked by the whole entire lobby of crocs. Okay, stop it! What the frick is going on? When I got out, it was still day 113. That didn't seem right, but it is 113. I then traveled over to Carno Island to retrieve another artifact. This one started off with a water cavern, but I soon entered a small chasm with a path around the edges down. I would also like to add that this place is freezing. I'd be fine with this cave, if not for the jumps and the skinny walkways. I had to jump stationary to not bounce off the walls to my death. I saw the artifact, but I was confused, because I saw another pinkish light, but it was actually a red drop. That caught my attention, because cave drops are already better than regular drops. Ooh, oh my god. I love loot, specifically free loot. After I cleared the room of overly aggressive insects, I collected the artifact of the devourer. It that looks like a Decepticon. I went for a purple drop in the snow place when it jukes me. Fine. I don't I don't need your trash load. Would have gotten me a, my fifth gallon my saddle or something. In the morning I opened another red drop, but this one was a thousand times worse. The amount of Gallimima saddles that I have gotten. I also checked the volcano for overseer requirements, which was not too bad. I kind of expected more. And I opened another gold drop, got a GPS, and it's it's not bad. But when will I use this? When I got back, I heard Sarko attacking my base. Something swimming. <gasps> Don't you destroy my goddamn house, you predator! Degenerate. You also might be wondering why there are creatures around the map now. I used to kill all wild dinos command to get them to respawn. It's not really a cheat, it's more like kinda giving the animals a boost in respawning. Because I believe the animals should respawn regularly. On day 115 I woke up and chose violence. I also found out that I got a raptor bone skin. I don't know how I got that, but you know, Randy looking fine now. I left yet again to the snow biome to pick up some more of the gang. But uh, I only brought one empty crowbar. I'm smart. I also picked up my old armor. But I will admit, I looked up where the last Megapithecus artifact was. And I was so sure it was in the swamp cave. Instead, it's in the ocean. The vast ocean. I mean, it says it's an easy water cave right here. But we'll see soon enough how easy this darn cave is. I got another purple drop for more rubbish. The only good drops are from caves, honestly, and I spend all my time going to drops all the time traveling, going around. <gasps> the next day, I went out looking for ducks for the Palmer to get a full set of scuba gear, but you know, I didn't find so many. Well, now that I was ready to take on the ocean, I looked for some megs or a basilo to take. And of course, everything was the lowest level possible. So level 32 Basilo was the best I saw so far, so I removed the mantis surrounding it. After a long time of fighting, I chased around the Basilo on my berry, since I can shoot off of it. Once I defeated all the threats and stopped myself from almost suffocating, I knocked it out. But Basilos are passive tanks, meaning you feed them while awake. I don't care for this low level anyways. So I eliminated it and I got a surprising amount of oil. America! 
found another one and removed the mantas, but then Beatrice accidentally hit it. So I just, I just killed it. You know, it was a bad level anyways, and I left her home before it became dark. On day 118, I didn't really do much. I restocked on supplies and looked at how no trees are respawning. And I went along the river to look for salmon to get prime fish, but I also did not find that many. When dawn broke, I finally found a salmon, and I harvested it with my sickle. Then when I got back, I cooked it to spoil slower. But don't do this. You know, if you cook prime fish meat, it's actually kind of bad now. It's worse than regular meat. Once again, the megs were embarrassingly low and lots of creatures began converging on my location. It's so great in this peaceful environment where nothing's trying to kill me, especially with thirsty sea dwellers that can one-shot me if I'm not on my mount. Hey, that's a level 80 meg. But I had to separate the male from her in an annoying fashion similar to aerial warfare. Once I got her alone, I lured her into the shallow water for an easier time. After a long time, she finally knocked out and I put in my taming supplies. And I waited. And waited. On day 120, I shot a bird. So I tamed it. Saw a tech parasaur. And I also tamed it. After a bit my bird tamed, and I named it Pelly. My parasaur also tamed. I made a Pelagornis saddle. I flew around and was a bit underwhelmed. Day 121, it was still not tamed, but soon, it did tame. I named it Maguna, cried everyone, and left for home. Traveling takes a while, and I do it way too much. I made a Meg saddle and tried her out on some baby Rexes, but for some reason I got no levels from them. I don't know if that's a glitch, or that some sea creatures have a different XP system, but I went out a bit to kill other sharks and went home when it became night. I went out again the next day to keep on leveling Maguna. She's pretty good, but I'm not sure she'll be good enough for the caves. I tried killing a jellyfish by out area damaging it, but that failed miserably. These things stun your mounts and you, usually leading to death, so you stay away from them. When I got back, I needed more metal to craft scuba tanks, so I visited my cave. I normally would not go here, but no other metal areas have respawned yet. I was actually hatching Rex eggs when I got back, and this one had a crazy health mutation. An extra 400. I don't actually know if that's good or not, but I know for a fact that last time I mutated Rexes, I got one one hundredth of that. The metal finished smelting, and I crafted a few scuba tanks. And then I cryoed Maguna and went for the easy water. Water cave. I went to the wrong cave. I'm here, but I'm supposed to be there. Anyways. It was day 124 when I got to the actual easy water cave. By the entrance, there was the usual plesio and meg, but nothing too bad so far. I descended deeper and entered the easy cave. Okay. What is that? <gasps> uh, yeah, you know, I don't actually remember anything regarding that event happening, as the real cave is an easy cave, right? I shut off my PC and returned home, because I realized I was not prepared for that trip. On the way home, I saw an ichthy and I tried taming it, but remember that this is a passive tame. They lose interest every time you feed them, making ichthys kind of annoying, and I had to use a few different methods to get close enough. Once my ichthy tamed, I cryoed Beatrice and left for home. He's quick, but is he quicker than an Alpha Tuso? I don't think so. On day 125, I stocked up on taming gear and went to find a Mosasaur. I believe that they usually stay in deep water, so I'm planning on luring it up a bit. I was just chilling, looking around, and then I kinda got cold. I tried putting on my fur armor, which didn't do anything, and then I got into- Whoa! What the hell? Jerk faces. You don't even have faces! How are you following me? Once I removed these dino killers, I harvested them for biotoxin. Biotoxin is pretty much just more potent narcotics, so I recommend it. And then I got attacked by electric eels. Oh no! I took care of them rather quickly. After that I saw the Moza, and level 76 is not bad at all. Well, I shot it in an effort to lure it into shallow waters, but it was not interested in me. It's not coming for me, what the frig? Turns out Moses aren't that aggressive, unless you're right next to them. Don't quote me on that though, maybe this particular Moses is a weirdo. I just 
chased it with my crossbow, but it was actually trying to run. And now it's getting stuck on everything. Is this the king of the ocean in Ark? If so, consider me unimpressed. Wow, this is... This is really something. It was all fun and games until an alpha Meg came to say hi. There were quite a few things here, so it turned into a brawl. And well, after that excursion, I continued to trank the Mosa. It was getting real bloody, and that's not good. Luckily, she knocked out before anything bad happened. Oh, it's out. Anyways, enjoy watching me tame this thing. So, 330 in total. Actually, I can't see the face. <sighs> I think almost four days passed when this guy was taming. Exhilarating, riveting, fantastic. Day 130, I went out to get metal with Andy. Why would I need metal? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I need a lot of scuba gear if I'm to complete this easy water cave. I got five scuba tanks in total, but I needed silica pearls for the Moses saddle, so I brought my ichthy to the bottom of the ocean. When I got attacked by another Alpha Meg, once I lured it away, I safely collected the rest of them. It was day 131, and I was ready. I made the saddle and uncryopotted the Mosin in deeper waters. This thing is gigantic, quick, and gigantic. I'd say the only setback is the turning radius, but how can I complain about that when I just killed every single creature in a mile radius? I was getting some good health down and I arrived at the cave, but the Moses still had to regenerate a lot. And if you played this game before, you know how long that takes. When I was ready, I saw the Alpha Tuso again. <laughs> I hate you. I probably could have defeated it if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I still really do not want to die. So far this cave was alright. Nothing dangerous. Very pretty, and filled with luminescent crystals. It's so glamorous. The only thing that could ruin it would be a j- For the love of God. Pure garbage. I cryoed my Moza thinking I'd be on foot for a bit when I realized I didn't even have to get off my mount. I killed a jellyfish that was lurking in the water, uh, along with a few others. I really love jellyfish. I came across another clearing, and there was nothing here. Interesting. Oh, never mind. Oh, yells. Oh, shoot! That gets me off my mount? This is fine. <laughs> God. Mate, get to me. happened to his health? They did 10,000 damage to me, so I gotta heal some of this up. This will take a while. I sniped another jellyfish and went to the artifact room. This place was yet another fun house filled with jellyfish. Oh, go away. Not a jellyfish. No jellyfish. I really love jellyfish. No jellyfish here, that's for sure. I had to retreat as those sharks did a number on me. I also like regenerating health, too. Thousand years. Later. I tried taking out the sharks again, but I could only get two of them before retreating. After force feeding 1,000 pieces of meat to my Moza, I was back at it again and defeated the Megs once and for all, and shot down this jellyfish to claim what was rightfully mine. Brute. Oh yes. I've done it. I parked the Moza and looked around for any drops in here. It looked nice, but there's no drops in here. And then, I, uh, I did a thing. What makes it more disappointing is I've done this before. Well anyways, I left in a hurry and planned to juke out the Tuso outside. And thankfully I did. I returned home and tamed a p t a p t a p t a p t I returned home and tamed a tech parasaur in the night. It's day 134 now and I was painting some of my armor again. I don't really know what happened to the other set. But anyways, I put my Rexes in a breeding ring and went to craft a few more cryopods. When I got back, I made a feeding trough because everything was starving. I went on Eclipse to retrieve food, and after I got enough, it was the next day. I filled the trough up to full, and what it does is it feeds every tame in the vicinity. I cryoed more Rexes from the obelisk and took Otto home. You little weasel. Yes, I left her all this time. I don't know where my monkey is, though. I put the artifacts in her inventory for safekeeping and executed some younglings. This is where the fun begins.
I cryopotted Yasmin and a few Rexes, and here comes the time lapse. Probably could have been done quicker had I just walked to the obelisk, but I placed the artifacts on the terminal and started the boss fight. These things have officially lost the hype. The Gamma Monkey. I could try the Beta Monkey too, but I don't want to do that right now. Monkey! Woo! Monkey! Eat it! Monkey! Monkey, monkey, monkey! Gorilla flag, 40 elements. Whoa, uh, that was underwhelming. I am pretty awesome. I We destroyed it. No one took any damage, but they also got no levels. Just. Yeah, to be fair. Oh my god. That looks beautiful. I mean, all I can do now is take some of my creatures and go home. And that's exactly what I did. It was day 139 and my shack was looking snazzy, but it could be better. Monkey! To make it better, I wanted to build new platforms and make an industrial forge. And so I did. Oh god. We interrupt this program to give you The Joy of Painting by Bob Rossick. Hey everyone, I'm glad you could join us today. We're gonna let the colors roll across the screen while I tell you what we're gonna be painting today. I'm thinking we could make a frosty mountain scene with a bright sky. Now take your cantaloupe orange and make a little sun right up in the sky. Spread the color all around but leave the middle of it white and keep the strokes horizontal. There. How about we add a pinch of yellow in the middle of that beautiful sun? Keep some of that white in there. Maybe we'll have a nice little pinkish sky. I kinda like that. And in our world, we can do anything we want. So let's go crazy. Let's add some magenta to that sky. There. Now how about there's some purple in that, in that sky? How about it? Remember to keep the strokes in the same direction. There. Shut up, Ixie. Jesus Christ, man. I'm, I, I am seriously gonna ex- <gasps> Now keep the sky dark and purple. Cover the edges and just blend. And if you want to go crazy, you can even add some clouds. But for now, I like it plain and simple. Maybe there's a little lake down there. Let's add a reflection in the water below. Now still water is always horizontal. There! Now that our reflection is done, let's add a happy little mountain. And maybe that mountain has a friend. Oh, what the heck. Let's give them another friend. We don't want them to be lonely up there. Shade in the mountain for complete darkness. There! Now here comes the fun part. Cover that right side of the mountain with your titanium white, but leave some of that darkness in there. Just slowly go down that mountain. Imagine what the shape is. Let the feeling guide you. Maybe there's some jagged cliffs sometimes. Who knows? Do what feels best. There! Oh, what the heck, let's add a shadow to that mountain using our sky blue. The producers don't like it when I go over the time limit, but what the heck, I don't care. Oh, there. Now take your slate, and let's add a tree. And every tree needs a friend. Let's get crazy, let's add a whole bunch of little trees. There. Take your white, and carve out a water line. There. Maybe there's a 
little bit of land sticking out. And there's a great big tree on it. Let's give him a friend. Just fill out a little area with nature. How about there's snow on those trees? Use your hat and highlight the tips of those beautiful dark trees. There! Now let's make the ground. Use your sky blue to color in a slope there. Now how about there's some shadow on that slope? This'll give it a little bit more depth when we're adding highlights. There! Now to finish this painting off, maybe there's a little foreground living right there. Shade it in to start with darkness, and we'll build it up. Add some of your sky blue to make some snowy bushes. I love that color, it just makes me happy. Finish it with sloping strokes on the ground. There! Let's add some of the finishing highlights to those bushes. Keep the tips the most bright while leaving some of that magnificent blue in there. Now let's fill in the rest of the ground with snow. Maybe it's a little bit icy. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe there's even a little log there covered in snow. There! And here we have our finished painting. I hope you enjoyed. And God bless my friend. Okay, I wanted to tame a Quetzal, and I had an ingenious plan. I remembered the last time I saw Quetzals when traveling, so I checked around the areas. The first spot, I didn't see any, and what makes it worse is that the render distance for creatures is much more terrible than I thought. Luckily, I found a Quetzal. It was a garbage level, but you can't be too picky with rare dinos. What I was gonna do is parachute off my mount and shoot the Quetzal from above. Yeah, this'll take a while. Now once I knocked it out, I added wooden spikes around the area, and it's a good thing I did because there are quite a few nasties in here. After I took care of the threats, I waited for this gal to tame. And when she did, of course I named her AC-130. Well, I cryoed her and left her home. You know, you need silica pearls for a Quetz platform saddle, so I went out for pearls. There were quite a few things blocking me from getting them, but after a very long time, I got enough silica pearls. Now that the Quetz is looking snazzy, it's time to level her up. Oh my god. Kill them! Jesus. Well then, I needed polymer so I went out for obsidian and maybe a bit of metal too, but then I had a shocking revelation. Quetzals store the weight of the boxes in their own inventory. Darn you game. Trying to be realistic. Wait, Ew. Yeah. Once I got enough obsidian, I left for home again. And then with my new polymer, I crafted a shotgun for some of the dragon artifacts. Okay, I kinda wanna try this out. Well, there goes that one. I traveled out to get some crystals for a night light thingy for my gun, and so I made one. I was clearing rocks for gunpowder when I came across a Lystrosaurus. With my new ammo and paint job for my pistol, I cryoed some dinos, brought armor, and left for the ice and swamp cave. I left my bird outside this cave and entered it. It was a little bit creepy, but at least it wasn't pitch black. Oh, there are quite a few, actually. To get away from these bats, I tried running outside when they blocked me. When I finally got out, my bird was gone. Birdie? Birdie? Hey, that, that was all a bad glitchy dream that was in no way my fault at all. I tried out a different route as the other paths had an impossible jump. Look, bats. What do you think will happen if I say Martha?
hey, uh, the series is over now. Isn't that fun? I know, I had fun. I'm like really great at parkour and the parachute plan was fantastic, wasn't it? But you know, this is all about the learning experience. I for sure learned many things about this game and although I died and can't play on this world again, that's just how Ark is. You die and you pick up things along the way regardless of all that you lost. I know that makes the game frustrating, but come on. After grinding for hours on end, and when you do succeed, that's awesome. And the game has dinosaurs, what more could you want? I know I didn't succeed very much considering I hadn't defeated the overseer, or even the dragon, but I liked the journey. And you know what they say, half the trip is the journey, and that is what Ark is about. And yes, I'm actually planning on doing this challenge on every map, except you. Starting off with Scorched Earth, so consider subscribing. And if you hadn't already, you can check out my previous videos.